Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to join us today in one of our NSE's uh, lecture series. Uh, my name is Chen. I'm with the Archaeology Unit here in Alanda Sri Vijaya Center, ICES. Uh, with me here today, who's delivering the talk, it's the legendary Ed McKinnon. I say legendary is because those of you who have been to Sumatra or even Java would have heard of this Orang Putih, or this white man who was trampling around, and uh, remind you to tell you the real story after. Uh, Ed is a very colorful character. He started his, his career out here in Southeast Asia, in Sumatra to be exact, as a planter. So a man looking after rubber trees and coconuts, what have you. So I suppose he will have a lot of time in his hands in the 1960s. Where you out here? 1960s. Out there in the 1960s, looking around, and got enamored and enchanted by the local beauties of the, the land. I'm not talking about his wife, Ibu Sinta, but I'm, I'm referring to the archaeology, of course. The archaeology and the cultural landscape. And it, it started off uh, 50 years of your uh, research and pursuit in this area. I, I believe you, you, you begin with correspondence with the, the, another legendary individual, O.W. Waters, Professor Waters, and that's how you got started, uh, talking to him and writing up with him about the finds that you have been picking up in Sumatra. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you were one of the few mature students for, for at Cornell when you got your PhD uh, some time ago. And 50 years later, uh, today, you are still out there in Sumatra, putting a lot of us to shame. <laughs> I had the distinct privilege of uh, being one of uh, Ed's pupil uh, back about 10, 15 years ago when he took me under his wing and first brought me and opened my eyes to the insights and archaeology of Sumatra. And I also had the distinct privilege of joining several of his excavations and his projects, uh, including Lamre, uh, including Aceh and Northern Sumatra. But you don't need me uh, to hear from me about how great this man is. I should leave uh, the floor to him. And please join me in welcoming Ed McKinnon, who will present to us today on his latest work on the tombstones of Lamri, Inchen Lamri. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, before I start to talk about uh, Lamri, there are a couple of other points which I'd like to raise uh, in connection with that chair, um, which I'll touch on in the next couple of slides. Uh, the first <coughs> is the geological environment. Um, the Earth Observatory of Singapore has become very interested in historical tsunamis. And um, they have carried out an excavation at, uh, on the headland at Lamre and actually found traces of uh, tsunamis, possibly more than one tsunami, that uh, took place in the 14th and 15th centuries. And uh, Kerry Shea has recently uh, published uh, a major paper on this um, and I can give you the reference later on if you so wish to follow it up. <clears throat> but the point is that uh, northern Sumatra is very close to the Sunda uh, Trench and a major seismic zone which affects certainly the, the west coast of Sumatra and the Indian Ocean going all the way up uh, past the Andaman Islands and so forth. And uh, submarine earthquakes in this area have, over several millennium, uh, millennia, ha have affected the coasts of Aceh. So we now refer uh, to the coast of Aceh Basar, uh, Aceh proper, as an exposed coast, uh, which it most certainly was uh, in the mid uh, medieval period. Um, Kerry Shea, in 2011, undertook some field research uh, on, the Lam on the beaches at Lamre and found traces of broken coral, which are evidence for tsunamis, as I say, at the end of the uh, 14th, 1392 or 1394, thereabouts, and uh, mid-15th century. And um, 
here he is actually examining one of the deposits on the beach at Lubuk, on the east side of the Lamre Peninsula. Um, significantly, the Sumatra fault line bifurcates <coughs> before uh, inland of Banda Aceh, so the whole of the Aceh coast, which is this area from here to here, and uh, the Krum Raya, um, <coughs> is subjected to ongoing and quite rapid subsidence. Uh, in the Panchu Bay area, which is here, the subsidence is at a rate of approximately two centimeters per year. Um, and as you go along the coast of Achebasa, you can see Second World War Japanese pillboxes, which are now 30, 40 meters out to sea, completely encircled by the waves. So it's a very dramatic subsidence that's going on, and uh, the, the importance of archaeology is that we can now begin to demonstrate that uh, this is a process which is ongoing and has been affecting the, the coast uh, of Ache indeed since the Holocene period. <coughs> The second point is uh, when I first began to write about Aceh in 1988, um, I associated the Bay of Lambaro, which is west of Banda Aceh, with ancient Lamri. Well, I was wrong. Lamri, uh, we now know, is located on and around the Krung Raya Bay, which is east of Banda Aceh. Some 40 kilometers east of Panchu. So Panchu has to be something else. Uh, it's an ancient site. We have evidence of imported ceramic wares there going back to at least the 11th century. Uh, there may be even older material about, but as the whole area is pretty well inundated, uh, then there's still a lot to find. But according to ancient Arab texts, there were two harbors in, in this area. One was Fansur and one was Lamri or Lamuri, Ramni. And I think uh, Panchu was in all likelihood ancient Fansur. I'll mention this again shortly. <coughs> uh, to give you an idea what's going on along the coast of Aceh, you can see from this slide uh, there are a lot of areas on the coast which are actually partly submerged and subjected um, <clears throat> to uh, the encroaching sea from Panchu here, areas which back in the 70s were mangrove areas. Uh, the mangrove was destroyed uh, during a very... Uh, active period of fish ponds construction back in the 90s, uh, which was most unfortunate because they didn't realize, realize at the time that destroying the marine environment also destroyed the spawning areas for fish. And fishing in Aceh is extremely important. So nowadays, after the tsunami, there has been an attempt to reestablish um, <clears throat> the mangrove in, in some of the areas. Some of it's been successful, others less so. But uh, the whole of these areas are uh, sinking, as I mentioned. And uh, with the earthquake of 2004, some areas just simply disappeared quite dramatically, <clears throat> particularly around uh, here, at this point, whole, <clears throat> whole areas just disappeared uh, below the, the surface. And so this is what you see on the beaches of Aceh Basar. Um, <clears throat> all over the place you come across traces of former ha habitation, uh, burial 
areas, these date from about the 17th century, now almost completely submerged by the incoming tide. So uh, unfortunately, the archaeological people in Ache had done virtually nothing to either inventorize or, or preserve any of these uh, early gravestones, some of which have very high artistic merit. <coughs> Um, going back to the whole of the coast and uh, the Sajara Malayu, in fact, um, North Sumatra was reputedly visited by uh, Marco Polo in the late 13th century, and he is uh, reputedly stayed for the waiting for the monsoon to change at Samudra here which at that time, he said, was already an Islamic polity. Um, contemporary with Samudra, <coughs> Samudra is here. At that time, uh, Marco Polo also mentions Lamri, Lamuri, Fansur, and the off, offshore island of Pulawe, which he describes as Gamis Pola. <coughs> In connection with the uh, Sajara Malayu, I will proceed to that in a minute, but the uh, Sheikh Ismail from South India uh, reputedly visited first Fansur, which was I, I put here, uh, Lamri, he then went to Aru, went back to Perlak, and finally arrived at Samudra where he found people who could read the Quran. <coughs> so I refer back to this map uh, as I go on. If you go out to pull away one of the offshore islands and look back to the coastline of Ache, this is what you see. Um, offshore islands to the, to the right, to the west, and Ache Head uh, Actually, head will be about here. Fansur was there, and the coastline then extends eastwards to the um, Krungraya Bay, which, as I say, is about 30 kilometers uh, east of modern Banda Aceh. Uh, to come on to the question of tombstones, there are two major tombstone traditions to be found in Lamre. One, which I've called proto bato Ache, which are a small, plain, slab type of grave marker, which up to now have been largely ignored by art historians for the simple reason that they have no inscriptions, they have little of any decoration, um, uh, but they may be amongst the earliest Islamic memorials in Sumatra. And it, the significant point is that I found four, uh, these same burial markers at four of the five ancient harbors mentioned in the Sajara <coughs> Malayu. There's also a somewhat larger obelisk-like type, which locally are called Plang Pleng. It's an Achenese term which infers uh, multi-element multi -element decoration. These are found only in a limited range of locations, mainly in Aceh Basar, which is Aceh proper, at Daya on the west coast, and at Samudra Passe on the east coast, where they were found, uh, formally found to be in association with the proto Batu Aceh. Uh, there may also be one early example of this type of grave marker in Barus. And there are also small pillar-like grave markers, some of which have multi-element top pieces. Well, Sheikh Ismail, according to the text of the Sajara Malayu, uh, brought Islam to Sumatra from southern India. And as I mentioned just now, Ismail came to five ancient harbors which are mentioned as Fansur, Lamri, Aru, Perlak, and Samudra Passe. 
The populations, according to the text, all profess to be Muslims, but only at the time uh, Sheikh uh, Ismail arrived could the people of Samudra Pase actually read the Quran. This is a literary reference which may refer to events that took place at some point in the 13th century, which was a time of turmoil in southern India when uh, Muslim armies from the north were making in, in, inroads into what is now Tamil Nadu. First of all, Fansur. Fansur is known as an ancient source of camphor, Kapur, Fansuri, and it's a site which has often been confused with ancient Barus, the Tamil name for which was Varusu. Barus, of course, is just north of Tapanuli Bay on the west coast of Sumatra, located some 500 kilometers south and east of Acha Head. It was long considered to be lost, but it was, if the archaeological evidence has been interpreted correctly, it was located in the Bay of Panchu, just uh, east of Acha Head, in what is also known as Lok Lambaru Nijid, which Chen and I were able to visit in mid-2005. <coughs> And interestingly, according to Valentine, who wrote in the 1740s, this was the place which was the birthplace of Hamza Vansuri. Hamza Vansuri, who was a, a famous Islamic poet. <clears throat> but again, uh, due to the rapid ongoing coastal subsidence, the ancient settlement sites in Panchu are, neither, are either fully submerged or located in what is the intertidal zone. And uh, quite recently, um, I was able to find two or three examples of the obelisk-like uh, Plang Plang grave markers uh, in, at the edge of the bay in Lambaru Nijid. They had recently been washed out of a sandbank, which had been, and therefore had been buried probably for several hundreds of years. This is a map of the, uh, from the Dutch colonial period, 1926 or thereabouts, showing um, Ache Head, uh, Ujung Panchu, the Bay of Panchu, or, and uh, Lambaro, as it was, and uh, the um, Ulele, which was the colonial port for Ache, with uh, one of two of the various mouths of the Ache River. <coughs> so Panchu, Panchu Head is here, Ache Head is up there. Um, this is all the Bay of Panchu extending to Ulele. Um, at this period, the, the village of Lambaru, meaning the new village, was actually lo located on an area uh, which has now disappeared completely, and uh, there was a beech ridge, a mangrove area, which extended from Lambaro all the way up to uh, this gap here between the end of the headland here and the, the, uh, the harbor at Ulele. And then uh, at that point, the Ache River um, flowed in into the bay on the uh, east side here. Now, a lot of this area here has simply just disappeared in the last um, century or so. Um, and again, the morphology of this coastline is changing pretty well all the time due to sinkage. Uh, Daybreak over Lok Panchu. It, it really is quite dramatic and worth getting up early for. Uh, this is what the Panchu Bay looked like in 1985. Um, this is now completely different. Um, the end of the beach ridge, as it's seen here, is since long gone. And now you have this 
area of drowned trees. Um, the, these trees are now long dead and all over the place you will see remains of earlier habitation in the form of grave markers, collections of uh, Batu Ache and Nisan um, scattered over a vast area. And at this point when I took the photograph there were remains of trees to be seen all over the place. Trees of course have been drowned <coughs> due to the uh, salt water. Lamri, Lamuri, Lanli, Lanmuli. One of the uh, early polities mentioned in Arab sources, also by the Chinese, uh, the Indians, uh, the Cholas knew it as Ilamuri Desham. It's mentioned in the Tanjore inscription and it also appears in Malay sources. Uh, it was located on and around the Krung Raya Bay, which is some 30 kilometers east of modern Banda Aceh. On the headland, known as Ujung Bate Kape or Ujung Batu Kapal at Lamre, uh, is the remains of an extensive early Islamic settlement. Um, <coughs> I discovered this by accident back in about 1996 um, when visiting one of the, the two uh, 16th century forts which had been built on this headland. Uh, they were built at the time the Portuguese were pressing uh, that part of North Sumatra and um, were built to command access to, to the uh, harbors. On, on the west side of the headland is a small bay called Lok Chut, which has uh, a very distinct channel access to the beach. And on the east side of the headland is the Bay of Lubuk. Um, and on this headland we found evidence of both the proto Bato Ache and ob the obelisk-like grave markers, which, as I mentioned, are only found in very limited uh, geographical areas. This is uh, Ujumbate Kapai from the Krungraya, and the uh, ship rock is out here. So you've got a headland which is about 60 odd meters uh, above the sea level. Uh, the Lok Chut Harbour is just here and the um, Lok, uh, the Lubuk Bay is on the other side of the headland. I have attempted to map uh, the antiquities or at least some of them on, on the headland from a not very satisfactory map which was available in the government offices in Ache. But uh, it gives you a rough idea of what the place looks like. Um, Lok Chut is here and access to Lok Chut was commanded by this artillery battery on the top of the cliffs known as uh, the Benteng Inong Bale or the Fortress of the Widows, and on the east side is a sandy bay with beautiful black and white sand, uh, and there is a 16th century fortress here at Kutalubuk, uh, which com commands access to this river, which is uh, a source of potable water, which I think was used in medieval periods by, by uh, the people who lived on the headland, as there's a track which runs down from here onto the beach. Uh, during the Second World War, the Japanese <coughs> decided to uh, put a pillbox in at the bottom of the track here to command the beach. The whole of this headland, which is, as I say, about 300 hectares, is littered with early burials and traces of habitation in the, in the form of 
uh, earthenware and broken ceramic shards, um, certainly dating from the 13th century onwards. <coughs> Uh, this is the uh, bay at Loch Chut, and you can see quite distinctly the channel, the deep channel that comes in through the, through the uh, coral and gives access to the beach. So shipping, small ships at least, could come through that uh, even at low tide. Looking from the east, from uh, the adjacent headland, you can see uh, the headland here and the ship rock with the Krumraya Bay behind the headland in the, in the middle distance. Well, uh, I mentioned the grave markers which litter the top of the headland and in, incidentally at other places round about as well. <coughs> uh, most of them uh, have been knocked over. Uh, unfortunately, until quite recently, there were large numbers of free-range ca cattle roaming everywhere. And that certainly hasn't done the archaeological uh, environment much good. Um, and many of them indeed are uh, fragmentary and damaged. But one of the interesting things that came out of the excavation at uh, Loch Chut was that we discovered a lime plaster floor. And uh, lime plaster used as flooring is characteristic of many domestic buildings in South India. Uh, it's not normally used or found in Aceh. So I think this is of some, some significance in suggesting who actually occupied this site in the 13th century onwards. Then mention Aru, which is the Delhi Serdang area of North Sumatra. Um, Kotachina site, which uh, has become quite well known over the past years, is uh, close to the modern port of Balawan, Delhi. But uh, inland of Kotachina is another site, which is called Kutaruntang. Runtang in Malay means to be spread out, scattered. And this is exactly what uh, the habitation at Kutaruntang was. Indeed, uh, lots of small scattered uh, places where houses were built and where burials took place. Um, as far as we can see from the 14th and 15th centuries. And we found over 100 early uh, proto bato Ache grave markers in this area. But moreover, uh, what is exciting, there are indications that Kutarantang was occupied earlier than the Islamic period because we found uh, several uh, large bricks and more recently an early Amoga Pasha uh, image has come to light, which is now in, in Maidan. And so that uh, there is a suggestion that Kutaruntang was uh, occupied by a Buddhist community prior to the arrival of Islam. And we can date that certainly to the Kutachina period from the 11th century onwards, if not earlier. Finally, Aru was conquered by Aceh in 1539. Uh, regained its independence for a short period, but finally succumbed in, in 1618 when an Achenese army under Iskander Muda uh, had a sex, uh, successful invasion and carried off many of the ha inhabitants of this coastal region uh, as slaves to Aceh. 